It was one of the most melodically inventive and technically agile bassists in jazz, possibly the most important bass player of the bebop generation. Who was Oscar Pettiford? Here on Big on Bebop. He was born Oscar Pettiford, September 30th, 1922 in Okmulgee, Oklahoma. His mother identified as being of Choctaw descent, and his father, Harry Doc Pettiford, identified as half Cherokee and half African American. His father, a veterinarian, decided to form a family band with his wife, a music teacher, and 11 children, including Oscar. He grew up playing in the family band where he sang and danced before switching to the piano at the age of 12. And then at 14, he started playing the double bass. Pettiford is quoted as saying that he did not like the way people were playing the bass, so he developed his own way of playing it. Despite being admired by the likes of Milt Hinton at the age of 14, he gave it up in 1941 because he did not believe he could make a living. Five months later, he once again met Hinton, who persuaded him to return to music. In 1942, Pettiford joined the Charlie Barnett Band, and in 43, played with Roy Eldridge at the Oinks Club. Also at the Oinks Club, he co-led with Dizzy Gillespie, the first bebop group to play 52nd Street in late 1943 to 44. Made his recording debut with Esquire All-Stars in December of 43. Gained a wider public audience after recording with Coleman Hawkins on his The Man I Love. Pettiford also recorded with Earl Hines and Bid Webster around this time. After his move to New York, he was one of the musicians together with Dizzy Gillespie, Thelonious Monk, and Kenny Clark, who in the early 1940s jammed at Minton's Playhouse, where the music style developed that was later called bebop. In 1945, Pettiford went with Coleman Hawkins to California, where he appeared in the Crimson Canary, a mystery movie known for its jazz soundtrack, which also featured Josh White. Boyd Rayburn in L.A. in 1945, he then worked with Duke Ellington from 45 to 48, and for Woody Herman in 1949 before working mainly as a leader in the 1950s. After breaking his arm playing with the Woody Herman softball team, he began experimenting with the jazz cello and recorded on the instrument for Mercer Records. He first played the cello as a practical joke on his band leader, Woody Herman, when he walked off stage during his solo spot and came back unexpectedly with a cello and played on that. The cello thus became his secondary instrument and continued to perform and record with it throughout the remainder of his career. He freelanced in the early 50s with Louis Belson and Charlie Shavers and then many of his own groups. He inadvertently discovered Cannonball Adderley after a musician tricked him into letting Adderley, an unknown music teacher, onto the stand. He recorded extensively during the 1950s for the debut Bethlehem and ABC Paramount labels. During the mid-1950s, he played on the first three albums that Thelonious Monk recorded for the Riverside label. Between 1954 and 1958, Pettiford also led sextets, big bands, and jazz orchestras which played dates in Manhattan venues like Birdland, where he continued to explore unusual instrumentation, including the French horn and the harp. The readist and composer Gigi Grice collaborated with Pettiford on the novel arrangements for the orchestra's hi-fi albums. He left for Europe in 1958 before moving to Copenhagen, Denmark and started recording for European companies. He performed with European musicians such as Attila Zoller and also with other Americans who had settled in Europe, including Bud Powell and Kenny Clark. Oscar Pettiford died in 1960 from a polio-like virus in Copenhagen, Denmark, shortly before his 38th birthday. Pettiford's influence on bassists of ensuing generations is frequently noted. Bass players often praise Pettiford for his technical prowess, melodic sensibility, and his role in expanding the role of the bass and jazz ensembles. Christian McBride called Pettiford probably the most important bass player of that bebop generation in terms of creating new language for the bass. Oscar Pettiford, innovative bebop jazz bass player. <laughs> Thank you.